Welcome to this clinical overview of eczema, which you'll also see referred to as dermatitis. To give you a sense of scale, this condition is incredibly common. We're talking about more than 31 million people in the United States who are affected, so it's something you're very likely to see in your practice. So what exactly is eczema? It's not just one single thing. It's a group of chronic inflammatory skin conditions. The core problem is a weakened skin barrier that struggles to retain moisture and protect against the environment. This leads directly to the classic symptoms of dry, itchy, and inflamed skin. Here's how we're going to break this down. We'll start with a clinical overview, then get into the specific types and their features. After that, we'll cover pathophysiology and triggers, move on to management strategies, and finally, we'll wrap up with complications and clinical impact. All right, let's start with the basics and characterize the condition. A few key things to remember. Eczema is chronic and inflammatory, but it's important to stress to patients that it is not contagious. It involves immune dysregulation, which is distinct from a true autoimmune disease. And there's a very strong genetic component here. You'll often see it in patients with a personal or family history of atopy, meaning eczema, asthma, or allergies. Next up, let's differentiate the common forms of eczema and their clinical presentations. As you can see, the common types of eczema are differentiated by their features and location. Atopic dermatitis is the most prevalent and typically shows up in skin flexures. Contact dermatitis is localized right at the site of exposure to an irritant or allergen. And then you have other forms like dyshidrotic, discoid, and varicose eczema, each with its own distinct presentation that helps guide your diagnosis. This is a central concept you have to understand with eczema, the itch-scratch cycle. It's a vicious loop. The intense itching, or pruderitis, leads to scratching. That scratching further damages the skin barrier, which increases inflammation and, in turn, makes the itching even worse. A primary goal of therapy is to interrupt this cycle. It's also important to recognize that inflammation presents differently across various skin tones. On lighter skin, you'll typically see pink or red patches. On darker skin, however, these patches may appear brown, gray, or even purple, and any post-inflammatory discoloration can be much more pronounced. Now what's happening on a deeper level? Let's review the underlying pathophysiology and the factors that commonly trigger flare-ups. The development of eczema generally follows the sequence. It starts with a genetic predisposition, like a mutation in the filigrin gene, which is essential for skin barrier integrity. This leads to an impaired barrier, which makes the skin vulnerable to environmental triggers. Once exposed, those triggers set off an inflammatory immune response. And what are those common triggers? Well, they can include chemical irritants, like soaps and detergents, allergens, like pollen or dust mites, extremes in weather, and even psychological stress. So, we understand the mechanisms. Now, how do we manage it? Let's look at the evidence-based strategies. The first thing to establish is that there is no cure for eczema. Because of this, our primary goal is symptom control. The focus is entirely on preventing flare-ups and improving the patient's quality of life. Foundational care is built on three pillars. First, the consistent, liberal use of moisturizers or emollients to maintain skin hydration. Second, identifying and avoiding the patient's specific triggers. And third, is comprehensive patient education on how to perform proper skin care. For active flares, we turn to medical treatments. Topical corticosteroids are first-line agents for reducing inflammation. Topical calcineurin inhibitors are a good alternative, particularly for sensitive areas. Antihistamines can help control the itching, and for more severe cases, we might need to escalate to phototherapy or systemic immunosuppressants. And finally, let's address the long-term effects, looking at potential complications and the overall clinical impact of this condition. Chronic eczema can lead to several complications. That compromised skin barrier raises the risk for secondary bacterial infections. Over time, persistent scratching can cause the skin to thicken, a process called lichenification, and also lead to long-term discoloration. Beyond the physical, the condition has a significant impact on quality of life and mental health, often driven by the chronic itch. This brings us to the end, and I'll leave you with a practical point to consider. How can we optimize patient education to really empower people to proactively manage their own condition, prevent that itch-scratch cycle, and ultimately minimize the frequency of their flare-ups?